Welcome to the NCAA Softball Championship presented by Capital One. Today, the battle for Baton Rouge continues as LSU and Louisiana square off for the right to advance to the regional final. Taking a look at the latest updated bracket from the Baton Rouge Regional. One day in the books, two games yesterday as LSU run-ruled McNeese in the opener while Louisiana went to extras where they eventually took down GW 1-0. The Tigers opened up play behind a strong performance from pitcher Shelby Sonseri in the circle. She allowed just one earned run in six innings, while super senior Amanda Doyle hit not one but two home runs as LSU picked up the win 10-2 in six. As for the Rage and Cajuns, their game was a little bit closer. Kendra Lamb took a perfect game into the seventh, but was eventually replaced by Summer Ellison after losing the no-no. And in the 11th, Carly Heath ended it with a pinch hit walk-off double in a 1-0 win. Along with Megan Willis, I'm Alex Loeb, and Megan, these two familiar foes, these rivals are meeting up yet again, LSU and Louisiana, for the 16th time in history in an NCAA regional. What are you expecting out of today's matchup? I'm expecting fireworks, Alex. This is going to be an incredible matchup. These teams, no strangers, as you mentioned, to each other. But for me, it's going to be all about the pitching for Louisiana. We saw between Allison and Lamb, 14 strikeouts. They went the distance, not giving up a run, but LSU and their bats. They got the 10 runs. They hit three home runs in that game. And again, biggest thing, Ella, Louisiana, where are their bats? This is a team that can get it done. Usually, yesterday they were silenced by Sierra Lang in the circle for George W., and they've got to make sure that they're going to come out because they need to put some runs on the board. One of the top offenses in the nation in Louisiana. Again, this is a team in Louisiana that is very familiar with this LSU squad. In fact, the Ragin' Cajuns hold the advantage in postseason play, going 8-7 and seven against the Tigers. Tigers and Cajuns on the way next. Welcome back to the NCAA Softball Championship presented by Capital One and LSU going with the veteran Shelby Sonseri in the circle for the second straight day, Megan. You know, a little surprised by this, Alex, just knowing about uh, how the games went earlier in the season. Uh, but however, I feel like yesterday she was so strong, so consistent. Coach Torina has called her the hero of this team so many times. She gets it done. With mixing her pitches, she can throw that drop, curve, rise, change at any count. She's going to top out around 66, but what made her so good yesterday, I felt like that she just had so much command of the zone. Taking a look at the Capital One starting lineups for Louisiana, Sanceri facing a raging Cajuns offense that entered the postseason as the seventh highest scoring team in the nation, averaging nearly seven runs per game. Yeah, and yesterday they were silenced for 11 innings. It took all 11 innings for them finally to get that first run across the plate. So I'm looking at the top of this lineup, Alex, and Sierra Bryan, when she goes, the team goes, and they really need to get her going uh, this afternoon. Louisiana enters the game with a record of 45-10 and 10 on the year. They entered the NCAA postseason with the third most wins in the nation, only trailing Oklahoma and Miami of Ohio. So here's Brian to lead things off, the Sun Belt player and newcomer of the year. For LSU, they come into the contest at 33 and 19, 20 and 9 here at Tiger Park, which is sold out today for the first time this season. 100% capacity allowed. LSU, the number seven national seed, their second highest regional seed in program history. Beautiful day here in Baton Rouge in the 80s and sunny. Yeah, I think when we heard that 100% capacity, we knew it was going to get exciting here in Baton Rouge. You know that the Raging Cajuns travel heavy. Brian's retired for the first out. I think they're going to call that a foul ball. I sure hope so, at least. <laughs> yeah. Well, she's adjusting the gloves as to say, hold on, give me another shot. Yep, That's just turned foul. Right mm -hmm. Ryan, the transfer from Georgia. 
Awaits the one two. This is where Sanceri is so good, right? She likes the toy with the batter. She'll get ahead of them within the first two pitches or so and then expect a lot of balls. But right on the corner, she uses that drop ball right below the knees and she spreads the plate out trying to get a batter to chase. LSU beat Louisiana twice this year, but that was way back in February, a 4-0 win and a 3-2 victory as well. Shelby Sinceri did start one of those games for Beth Torina's squad. Sinceri in three and a third allowed two runs and four hits to the Raging Cajuns. Beth Torita in her 10th season has taken LSU to the Women's College World Series in three of the last five full seasons and four times overall. This one hit to deep right and Sierra Bryan with a leadoff jack, one nothing Raging Cajuns. Well, I said it, Alex. This team needs Sierra Bryan at the top of the lineup. After yesterday, she had five at-bats. She was hitless. Today, not the same. This ball's a rise ball. It's up in the zone, and it's everything she wanted yesterday. Today, she's able to barrel this one up and send it deep. Ball was blasted. For Louisiana, that is now a program record. 63 home runs on the season, top 25 in the nation. And this dugout is pumped again after they were limited to one run in 11 innings yesterday against George Washington. They grabbed the early lead. Here's Caitlin Aldrich. You know, it is interesting, Megan, looking at the previous two matchups between these two teams this year, Maribeth Gorsuch pitched in both of those games and didn't give up a single run, but they opt to go with Sunseri, and Sierra Bryan takes her deep for the early Louisiana lead. Well, you know how I feel about games in the past. Yes, you learn from them. You're gonna go back and watch those, those games just to see where the pitches were and see if you can take anything, but these two teams are completely different at this point. I think the fact that Louisiana only got one run, goes 11 innings. That's dangerous for LSU today, Alex. This is a bunch of hitters that are probably going to take out all that frustration right now and will at least try to against Sunseri. Again, the winner of this game advances to the regional final tomorrow. All during fouls one off. Well, since the calendar turned to April, Caitlin Aldrink has been on fire. She's been the team's best hitter entering the postseason since April 1st, batting 446, entering this Baton Rouge Regional. And there is the first out as Aldrink retired. Jade Gortarez is a player who was batting in the bottom half of the lineup yesterday, the senior from Riverside, California. But after coming up with two hits in a strong performance, she has been bumped up to the three spot today. Here she is. Yeah, no surprise, especially right now. Coaches are going to do the whole, what have you done for me lately? A little surprised here, though. You see her swing in first pitch. That was something that we saw yesterday out of the Raging Cajuns offense. Just really aggressive and it's hard to tell your batters no I don't want you to swing but when they're aggressive at pitches out of the zone that's when it becomes a problem and that one the rise ball great job by Sinceri getting it up there and getting uh, Gortares to chase. Two way now for Justice Mills who was also moved up in the lineup to the cleanup spot the former college roommate of Sierra Bryan's back in their time at Athens playing for Georgia headed over to play with her with Louisiana as well and has had a nice senior season hitting 303 with eight home runs on the year. Chop pass on Sari and there's a base knock for Mills. Now 
You know, Alex, I was trying to figure out the Justice Mills move, but again, something Coach Glasgow must just have felt in her later ABs because she didn't have any hits yesterday either. And she was down in the seventh spot, but probably just watching how she was taking pitches even and just felt maybe a little bit more locked in. Jerry Glasgow paying a hunt playing off a, a big hunch and it's paying off early. Fourth season in charge of Louisiana, and he has called this squad the most talented team he has ever coached. Louisiana looking to advance to a Super Regional for the first time since 2016. I think part of the reason he thinks this is such a talented team is you've got a lot of older talent, right? You've got women in their 23, 24 years old, played for multiple coaches. Dalton to right, and the inning will come to an end, but the damage is done. Sierra Bryan with a leadoff home run off Shelby Sonseri, and the Raging Cajuns jump in front. Let's see how the Tigers respond. Bottom of the first, all the way. CAA Softball Regionals is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Over 1,200 fans expected at Tiger Park today for this battle between the rivals, the in-state rivals, Louisiana and LSU. And getting the start in the circle for Louisiana will be the reigning two-time Sun Belt Pitcher of the Year, Summer Ellison. Summer Ellison getting a nod today. I have to imagine we all presume this would happen just knowing that Lamb got the start yesterday. She did throw the five innings, however, uh, but that's not enough to keep her out today. What she was so good at, Alex, is that she was throwing that, spotting that drop ball to each corner, getting those seven strikeouts. Taking a look at the Capital One starting lineups for LSU, of course, led at the top by Aaliyah Andrews. Beth Tarina calls her a superhero, said she doesn't even want to think about the end of her career, which is winding down right now. One of the most electric center fielders in the nation, who, by the way, has had a ton of success against Louisiana pitching this year. Five for seven on the season with a double and two stolen bases against the Ragin' Cajuns on the season. And that's exactly what you want to hear if you're a Tigers fan because yesterday Andrews just held the one hit and it was in her fourth at bat against McNeese. So again, looking for her. Same thing. I mean, you want this out of all of your leadoff hitters. You want them to set the tone. Bounces off the netting as a team LSU hitting 268 on the season. They're averaging a little over four runs per contest, but they did put up 10 yesterday against McNeese. That one fouled off. Well, we thought watching yesterday's game, Louisiana against GW, Kendra Lamb, the starting pitcher, took a perfect game into the seventh inning, gave up a leadoff single, and they promptly pulled her out of the game, and you thought, <laughs> I mean, we know Ellison's resume, but can she do any better? <laughs> and she was just about as good, allowing just one hit and striking out seven and five. As Lamb looks on, the sophomore from Australia. Yeah, I love that. It's like, okay, you got the seven strikeouts, only one hit. What can I do? Okay, I'll go out and do the exact same, just a couple innings shy, <laughs> or one inning, actually. She did it in five. Yeah, they combined for That's 14 tough. strikeouts. That tied a season high for Louisiana pitching. Andrews chops one up the middle, scooped up by Dalton. Not in time. Andrews almost automatic there with that speed. And that's exactly what you want out of her. Andrews using that ground so well able to drive it it's a drop ball so she just gets to drive it right into the ground perfect location and I don't care who you are at shortstop with the speed of Andrews no one's getting her keep an eye on her at first of course with 144 stolen bases the second most in LSU history here's Ciara Briggs Ellison on the season 
has faced this LSU offense twice in nine and two thirds against the Tigers hasn't walked a batter but has allowed four earned runs in those two meetings. That one chopped Dalton busy in this inning and nowhere to go. LSU in business here in the bottom of the first hits by Andrews and Briggs. And this is exactly what you want out of your slappers when you have a drop ball pitcher you're just aiming to get on top of it and drive it hard into the ground. Right now LSU maybe it's all the rain that's been there in the past couple days but they've been able to make that ground hard because those balls are getting some serious hang time. And here comes a dangerous hitter in Taylor Pleasance, the SEC Newcomer of the Year. She's driven in 47 runs on the season. Pleasance, the team leader in home runs and RBIs, and was just as good, if not better, in SEC play. Hitting nearly 370. Andrews is going. Here's the throw over to third, and Andrews is safe as both runners advance to scoring position. This is a classic play right here, Alex. You've got your three hole hitter who's not usually a bunter, show bunt to draw in the third baseman, and that's a close call right there. I mean, that becomes a race between Dalton and Andrews, and it almost looked like, I think the throw beat her. Andrews just slipping her hand in, and yep. <laughs> I don't blame Coach Blasco coming out to, oh, I thought he was gonna argue. <laughs> just the timeout here, I'll calm down. I'm rattled. <laughs> Everybody is, is <laughs> up in arms here as Glasgow goes down to calm down his pitcher in the circle, Summer Ellison, as you get another look at the steal. You know, watching yesterday's game where Louisiana pitching was nearly unhittable all game long. All of a sudden, the first two batters reach with base hits. What do you think Lasco is saying to Ellison and company right now? I think that that's just a conversation about defense right here. He's probably pumping them up. That's what's so good about Jerry Glasgow is he is your number one fan when it comes to that. That in that case right there, he's not going to tear into anyone, right? Especially your top pitcher and just remind everyone what the game is, who you have up to bat, and just play a little catch. So here we go, Andrews on at third, Briggs at second, and Pleasance waiting on a 2-0 count. The dugout is pumped in already. LSU has two hits. That matches the number of hits Louisiana pitching allowed in 11 innings last night. And that one hits Pleasance. The bases are going to be loaded. Alex, I told you, fireworks. <laughs> We're going to be on our toes, I think, this entire game between these two. This, a drop ball. They're trying to establish the inside part of the plate. Pleasance all over the plate. Unfortunately for Ellison, flips her back foot. This is the last batter. Ellison wants to face right now Amanda Doyle who went yard twice yesterday and has now hit 32 career home runs tied for the fifth most in program history. Here was Doyle the super senior from California yesterday against McNeese in the Baton Rouge regional opener two bombs against the Cowgirls bombs in nearly exact same spot so Doyle so good on that outside corner no matter if it was down in the zone or up in the zone her timing spot on hitting 833 this year with the bases loaded So Summer Ellison trying to get out of a jam right now. Again, the two-time Sun Belt Pitcher of the Year came into the postseason tied for eighth in the nation and wins. And Ellison gets ahead one and two. 
I think that's what we learned earlier this week. And as we've been watching Ellison, is just how calm she is in the circle. She does not get rattled by much, Alex. And you can just see it right now. She goes right back at the next batter, right next pitch. This is what being a six-year player is all about as well, right? You've been there. You've done that. This is nothing new for her. Andrews on third, Briggs at second, Pleasants on first. Doyle drives one to deep left field, and that one is off the track in the bottom of the wall. That will bring in at least one run. Here's another, and it's a two-run double for Amanda Doyle as LSU jumps in front two to one. And just as we're mentioning, calm, cool, collected. Well, so is Amanda Doyle. This ball's a drop ball. It's inside, and she drops the barrel and drives it. This is to the perfect part of the field. And quite frankly, you got to tip your cap to Kendall Talley and left. She bare hands this off the wall, and she almost makes the play at third. Doyle, though, easily stand up double. And again, in front of a great atmosphere at Tiger Park. First time all year, a sellout expected. And the home team has grabbed the lead. Here's Georgia Clark. Already action in the Louisiana bullpen. Kendra Lamb, the sophomore, warming up just in case. No surprise there, just knowing exactly how quick Coach Glasgow made the change, even just giving up one hit yesterday, 0-0 ball game in the seventh. He's not going to let anything get out of hand. Georgia Clark has had a lot of success against Louisiana pitching this season. Hit a home run against the Raging Cajuns in their second matchup of the year, a 3-2 win for LSU in late February. Pleasant at third, Doyle on its second after the double. Clark golfs one to right field. Rawls makes the grab, and the runners will stay at their bases. So three of the first five batters for LSU have reached today. A double by Doyle, singles by Andrews and Briggs. And with one away, here's Raylene Gutierrez. Second year freshman pulled off one of the rarest feats you will ever see in the game of softball earlier this year. She hit an inside the park grand slam against southeastern Louisiana. <laughs> One of her That's two home deep. runs on the year. Ellison already up over 20 pitches in this first inning. You know, for me, Ellison's still just hammering that drop ball right now, and I know that's her bread and butter, but yesterday we saw her mix in the curve and the change a little bit more, and just the way that LSU's swinging at that pitch right now. Maybe try to mix in a little bit, a couple other pitches like that. That's a nice-looking low rise or screw. It's going to come out of the side of your hand either way. It's just a different look for these batters. Change their eyes up. You're going to see it's going to come out, it's moving up, it's moving out. 2 1 on the way from Ellison. Gutierrez chases that one upstairs. She smashes it to deep right, and there's another one. Oh my goodness, LSU going to town in the first inning. Just as I'm mentioning, mixing up the zone, they go back to back. This time they're going with the rise ball inside. And you know what? I'll eat my words. Good Tierra's all <laughs> over this rise ball and ready for it. Almost the exact location of Sierra Bryan's home run in the last half inning. Again, Summer Ellison. 
came into this game 24 and 6 on the year one of the winningest pitchers in the nation and so far she's only managed to get one out through the first six batters a homer a double and two singles and a hit batter 5-1 Tigers I mean, we saw it yesterday, Alex. This team is ready to swing the bat. They got the 10 runs against McNeese. And I felt like McNeese was coming in strong. They had uh, Whitney Tate come on in there. You saw Jenna Edwards, and they were able to score off of both of them fairly easily. So again, this offense has definitely been doing its work. And it shows. Fireworks here at Baton Rouge early. We saw a pitcher's duel yesterday between Lee, Louisiana and GW, a one nothing affair in 11 innings. But LSU's offense picking up right where they left off against McNeese. They scored 10 and 6. Sunseri, the pitcher, she tripled earlier this year against Louisiana pitching. Summer Ellison, one of her roughest innings of the season so far. Five runs allowed, all earned off four hits. And just a third of a frame so far. 2 2 on its way to Sunseri. And she delivers a base knock into the gap in left center. Well, Megan, at this point, what, what do you do? We saw Lamb warming up. Is it too early? You know what? That's what I was just going to go into because that was a changeup, Alex. We have an, That might have been the first one of the inning, and they're all over it. Timing was spot on. So when I see that, too, I, I don't imagine Coach Glasgow is going to leave out there that much longer he's no stranger and at what point are you now I mean I mean it's the first inning so I know that Louisiana can score quite a bit more but you're thinking about saving pitchers and who's going to be stronger another hit that one is mishandled by Tally momentarily and how about this eight of the first nine batters have reached seven of them with base hits off the two-time Sunbelt pitcher of the year and truly, they're probably just making sure they're giving Kendra Lamb plenty of time to warm up, Alex. It's the first inning. We just saw her go down there. I mean, if she's resting like that, she's probably ready now. We shall see. Two on, still only one away for the true freshman, Allie Newland, making just her 14th start of the season. Started last night as well, went 0 for 3 at the plate. Again, the winner advances straight to the regional final tomorrow. Pitch number 31 of the inning for Ellison. There is strike one. Newland hitting 222 on the year, but before her start last night, came up with three clutch pinch hit at bats before that in the SEC tournament. Went around one and two. A home run by Raylene Gutierrez, double by Amanda Doyle, and four more singles so far from the LSU offense here in the first. Ellison entered the day with 98 career victories. Only two raging Cajuns in history have hit the century mark, but right now in a big hole down by four. <laughs> Just no nah, delayed call. <laughs> wow, okay. And there is the yeah, the second out. I was gonna say, man, that is about as close as you can get 
It's a nice job with her drop ball. She's been working Newland away. Finally going back inside and just painting that corner. So LSU has now batted around back up to the top of the order we go with Aaliyah Andrews. Ellison has allowed a season high tying five runs so far in this inning. Andrews started it all off with a leadoff single. Aaliyah Andrews now six for eight on the season with three stolen bases against Louisiana. Sanceri over at second, Cummins on at first. Remember, Louisiana jumped out to the early lead after the leadoff home run by Bryan, but it's been all LSU since then. Andrews pokes one to the left side. That's going to reach left field, and the hit parade continues here in the first inning. This is just so huge for Aaliyah Andrews again yesterday. Just the one hit late in the game. Today already two hits and you're still in the first. And this is the right move right here. I have to imagine Jerry's going to make the change, go with Kendra Lamb. And some days it's just, oh, switch a route. a surprise. <laughs> it's like Vanessa Foreman's coming to the circle. So how about that? A pitching change early on. We'll take a timeout in Baton Rouge. The Tigers up 5-1 over the Raging Cajuns. And the sophomore from Lakewood, California takes over for Ellison in the circle, Megan, facing Sierra Briggs. Bit surprised at all they go with Foreman instead of Lamb? You know, yes and no. <laughs> Very neutral here. Right away, I thought you would go with Lamb, try to change it up. But this is about the entire tournament here, Alex. It, you're either thinking about the next game or the possibility, just looking at the score here, if you're going to have to face LSU again tomorrow, if, they, if, if that's just how it works out, then you're saving Lamb for that, I think, experience in that game right there. So going with uh, the lefty, and not a bad move either. Foreman, she's going to top out around 60. She's a lefty. It's a completely different look than what we just saw out of Ellison. Ellison threw 36 pitches in the first inning. Foreman technically has the best ERA on the staff, but in just 14 innings this year, an ERA of two. Opposing batters hitting 264 against her as Ellison looks on. 37 pitches to be exact. Yeah, she's only going to top out 57 miles per hour. She throws the curveball both sides of the plate in a changeup. So, again, I think Coach Glasgow's just looking somehow to just change up the timing here for the Tigers. Tough spot to come into in a bases loaded situation, but Alderink is able to make the grab. LSU leaves the bases loaded, but they get more than enough offense in the first inning. Amanda Doyle with a two-run double, and Raylene Gutierrez goes yard as well. LSU up 5-1 after one. It will be interesting to see how the Raging Cajuns respond after the Tigers put up a five spot in the bottom of the first inning as we move on to the second in Baton Rouge, taking a look around the country. Arizona State, how about that, just like that. The 15 seed eliminated extra innings thrillers. Meanwhile, here in Baton Rouge, we saw one last night, one nothing in 11 innings. Elsewhere, James Madison took down Liberty, 4-3 and 10, and Oklahoma, their offensive onslaught continues. A 19-0 win over Morgan State, the largest shutout by any team in D1 NCAA postseason history. I mean, I just shocked again at that ASU, and I have to imagine some people aren't shocked. You've got the people talking Pac-10, and they heard Pac-12 really wanted to push them, but ASU not being able to come out of that is a big deal. Another big upset, Georgia over top of Duke today. That was just today, and Duke, the high seed, they're the 13th seed, but the regional was in Athens, so probably played yep. a little bit of a part of it. You get that home crowd feel. You and I have called some games out there, and... Athens gets rocking out there. They love their squad out there. A lot of upsets and interesting games around the nation. 
Back here in Baton Rouge. The six, seven, and eight hitters do up in the second. Tally, Heath and Rawls, Kendall Tally, had a couple of hits last night and a couple of hits earlier this year in the second meeting between these two teams. Well, for LSU, you know, they came into the postseason with a deceiving record. They were 32 and 19 before yesterday, 13 and 11 in the SEC. But you look at the strength of schedule, and you take away the Ivy League teams, which have just gotten underway in their spring season, their delayed spring season. And LSU not only played the toughest, toughest strength of schedule in the nation, they had the highest numerical strength of schedule anyone in the nation has played in 14 years. And Beth Torina told us, she said, Listen, it's kind of a, a blessing and a curse. You know, <laughs> it was a curse early on. We suffered a, a number of defeats, but it's a blessing because now they are battle-tested for the postseason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's one of those things, Alex. It's a slippery slope because you're trying to make sure your team understands, right, and they're not getting down on themselves, even though that number in the L column keeps creeping up. Louisiana starts off the second inning with a base hit by Tally. And it's so important. You see those losses and you get down on yourself, but again, it's big picture and you just have to keep harping on it. And that's what Coach Trina is talking about, you know, all season long. And, I, and even talking to the, the athletes themselves, it wasn't until they saw their name on that, on the, the screen on Sunday at Selection Show that they were number seven, that they were like, oh, okay, so it really does mean something, the strength of schedule. Apparently it does. And Playing all those tough teams early, nothing will surprise them now. They're up 5-1 here. And how about this? Carly Heath getting the start. All she did last night was come off the bench in the 11th inning and deliver a pinch hit walk-off double to end it against George Washington. For me, Alex, it was all about that interview we got from her afterwards and what she said about just taking over for the number four hitter, Julie Rawl. She said she was the leader on that team and she just wanted to step up and make her proud. And I have to imagine she's pretty proud. The fact that she was able to stay composed, she got a pitch she could handle and drive it off the wall. A clutch, clutch performance, by the way, there moments ago. Tally moved on over to second base. This one shot back to Sinceri. One away. Well, Louisiana has put together some offense early on. Three of the first seven batters do have hits against Sinceri. And they broke through for a few runs against her earlier this year. So we'll see how they respond here. In the second, Julie Rawls coming up to bat for the Ragin' Cajuns. Rawls, one of eight transfers that are usually in the starting lineup for this Louisiana squad. Transfer from Northwestern State. Team leader in home runs and RBIs. Just a really gritty player, has battled through a thumb injury since pretty much the entire season. I think for Louisiana, if you have that, <laughs> down in your eight hole. That's pretty nice right now, especially with a runner on third for Rawls, just one out, just looking for anything up in the zone, a sack fly. This would be a great time for them just to nip away at this, this score. And even if they can come out of the second inning just with one run, that's huge. Again, Louisiana averaging nearly seven runs per game, seventh highest scoring team in the nation and top 25 in the country in home runs and batting average as well. Full count on the way. And the winner moves on to the regional final tomorrow, and the winner of this regional take on the winner of the Tallahassee regional. If LSU were to win this, they would host the Supers. But here we go, a walk to Rawls in Louisiana now has two aboard in business with only one away here in the second. First walk of the day for Sunseri. 
So Louisiana having some success early on despite the four run deficit. Four of the first eight batters have reached against Shelby Sunsera. You can tell it's a hot, humid day out there, mid to upper 80s. And a pinch hitter coming up for Sophie Piscos, who scored the game winning run last night. But won't get a chance to bat at least right now. Here is Bailey Curry, who was in the starting lineup yesterday. The junior transfer from Toledo. There is ball one from Sinceri. What do you make of her in the circle right now? We were talking a lot about Ellison. What about Sinceri, Megan? You know, this inning, I think this is all about Louisiana taking pitches, right? We were, t we were talking about it in the first, swing and first pitch. I think now they're trying to make her throw a strike. And for Sinceri, she doesn't have to. That's her bread and butter. She'll usually get ahead in that first one or two, and then she just toys with batters. She'll throw that drop ball out of the zone, either low or off the plate, go high at the eyes and usually that's what makes her so good right as she tries to get batters to swing at balls. Curry mm. did go around on that so it's one and two. I'm not sure about that one Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get another look. Oh, huh? All right fine. She From wins. that angle. <laughs> Curry exhales as she gets ready for the one two. With Tally on third, Rawls on first. That one just misses. And that's what makes Sunseri so good, is that's nearly the exact same pitch, but she can bring it just a little bit further inside. So good with her location. She can throw it for a strike, throw it for the river, and go in the other batter's box. Two-two on the way. Curry ropes one foul. And both these starting pitchers throwing a lot of pitches. We saw Ellison throw 37 in the first inning before she was removed. And now the next one from Sinceri will be number 40 on the day with only one out here in the second inning. He's given up three hits and walked a batter as well. Another full count coming up from Sanceri. And this is where if you're Curry, you're in your head. Well, hopefully she's not, but I am. You're just seeing drop, drop, drop inside. You're thinking, am I going to get it again? She doesn't want to walk me, or are they finally going to go with a different pitch? Maybe it's going to be drop away. We rise up. Payoff pitch. Curry or reaches for that it. one and fouls it back. <laughs> Again, Sunseri did allow two runs in three and a third earlier this year in her start against this Louisiana team. Curry chops one over to short. Pleasance on to first, and that will bring in a run. So Louisiana chipping away at the deficit. It's now a 5-2 ball game. And for me, Alex, that's a productive out right there. I know you're, you want to get the hit, and I know you want to keep that rally going, but at least you're getting that RBI out front on a changeup. Doesn't matter. It's the second inning. One at a time. Still early. Want to stay within striking distance. Back up to the top of the order we go. As Sierra Bryan led off the game with a home run. The 31st homer of her career. This was Ryan starting the things off. In the zone, and she just hammers this one. That was a deep count, too. She was able, I think, to go back to that full count all over that rise ball. Shows bunt, lays it down. Charging in from first is Gutierrez. And you're not going to catch the speedy Brian over at no, first. No, but they're going to call her out. She was out of the box, the home plate mm. umpire, calling dead ball, dead ball. Going to say she, again, that back foot was out of the box, and that's going to be the third out. 
It's a 5-2 ball game as we move on to the bottom of the second now in Baton Rouge. We'll be back. We're back in Baton Rouge, Louisiana up, top of the second, have a chance to keep putting on some runs, and unfortunately with the runner on second, Sierra Bryan, who would have been safe, gets called out as you see that back foot, her back left foot out of the batter's box in front of home plate when she makes contact, and because of that, she is out, and unfortunately for the Raging Cajuns, that was a huge opportunity that they missed. Again, runner on second, Bryan, her last at bat goes yard, so... A huge help for uh, LSU and the Tigers. Yep. The Louisiana Raging Cajuns do get one, so they've scored in each inning, but still trail by three. Vanessa Foreman after replacing Summer Ellison out of the pen. Back in the circle. Now for the second against Taylor Pleasance. Well, Foreman came in in a tough spot with the bases loaded. Again, had only thrown 14 innings all year, but picked up the third and final out. Back in the first, here's was Pleasant's fouling one off. And although we've only seen one batter before Pleasant's here, I think this is a good move, and you're just watching Foreman, I feel like, Go right at these batters with her curveball. She's not going to overpower you, but for LSU, it's going to be all about wait, 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 see the ball deep, which we saw them do really well yesterday. But this ball, it's not only curving, it's just kind of dying right over the plate. We'll have to see what sort of adjustments LSU makes at the plate, where they stand. Are they going to move up in the box, stay back in the box, and lay off of it as it's dropping through the zone? The last time there was a postseason, Foreman was a part of it with the 2019 Arizona squad that made it to the Women's College World Series. Pleasance rips one foul. Nice grab. <laughs> Catching for your pitcher. Got to keep heads up. Maybe foul balls. Well, the way these teams are hitting the ball today, you've got to be very aware. Seven runs, ten hits, two homers combined, and we're only in the second inning. Full count offering, and we'll do it again. Coming up after this one in Baton Rouge, on Elimination Saturday, you'll have McNeese taking on George Washington. The Colonials still looking for their first ever NCAA postseason win. Came close last night. Lost in extras to this Louisiana team. You know, Alex, we're talking a lot about how Louisiana and they have their transfers. I know. Oklahoma State and Kenny Gajewski called himself transfer you, but I think uh, Jerry here has them beat. And on the oh, yeah. flip side, LSU, LSU has zero transfers. So kind of a tale of two different stories when it comes to building these rosters for these squads. There's one of those transfers, Dalton, getting it done. Pleasant's retired. The Women's College World Series returns to Oklahoma City this year. Finally, we got postseason softball back. The action begins Thursday, June 3rd at noon Eastern, live on ESPN. For more info, go to NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Megan said it a bunch yesterday, but it is so nice to have a Women's College World Series returning after the season was cut short a year ago. This feels like normal. Absolutely. Well, Doyle has been more than comfortable at the plate this weekend in Baton Rouge. A two-run double today and two home runs yesterday. Bumping that average up. Swinging at this one. And that'll drop in. I mean, she is just doing it all. A double, a two home runs, and now a single for Doyle. 
six RBIs on the weekend. <laughs> She's seen it all right, Alex. Here comes Georgia Clark, eight home runs on the season. Third most. And this team, LSU, has hit 58 home runs on the year. right over the plate. It's hard even Piscos behind the plate kind of jumping at that because you've got a runner on just goes to show you this is a pitcher four man just topping out 57. She throws that change up though. It's going to be down in the 40. So it's slow, slower, slowest. Everyone's got to stay a little extra patient. Clark Skies went into foul territory and Mills is there. Two away. So much better inning for Louisiana pitching so far here in the second. Yeah, and I think that's something, you know, sometimes pitchers a little bit younger get caught up on speed and having to throw harder doesn't always mean you're going to be successful, right? You still got to make the ball move. You still got to spin it nice and tight. And what I've seen out of Foreman so far, she's got an incredible curveball. You see the fact that she's able to throw it to both sides of the plate and just drops down in the zone as well. First pitch strike. Gutierrez with three home runs on the year. Two that have actually gone over the wall. Inside the Parker as we mentioned. Her third home run of the year. Came in the first inning. With two on, this was Gutierrez back in the first. Seems like forever ago. That was a long bottom of the first inning. Putting LSU up at that point, five to one. And emphatic stomp on the plate for Gutierrez celebrating afterwards. I'm pretty sure it went right off that foul pole as well. Knock it right in there. Strokes this one into center, right center, runner rounding second. And LSU now with runners on the corners and a little bit of a celebration for Gutierrez who has a hot bat so far today. Yeah, and Doyle with only one uh, stolen base on the season was running. So I imagine that was a hit and run there, Alex, which is why you see her standing easily on third. Here is the pitcher, Shelby Sunseri, trying to help out her own cause with two on and two away. She singled in the first inning. Has driven in 23 runs on the season. Runner on first is going. Here's the throw cut off. And Doyle was not heading home. So it's now second and third for LSU. For Sunseri, offensively, her breakout year came in 2019 when she launched 17 home runs and drove in 60 runs. More than half her career homers came in that season. You're starting to see it a lot more, Alex, just the pitchers that are also hitting. I feel like there is a time where pitchers just stayed pitchers. And now you're watching these athletes come in and really. Sunseri smashes one to left, and that is going to bring in two more runs. Shelby Sunseri making it a 7 2 lead. And just on cue, as we're talking about these athletes, they're not just pitchers, she's a hitter, and I think Coach Tarina. She'd say the same thing. No matter what, she's always going to be in this lineup. Her timing's right on. This is a ball coming inside, a little up in the zone, and she's able to keep her weight back just enough. Unfortunately, Kendall Talley not able to glove it. She did everything she could, left her feet. She's not able to glove it. Off the top of the glove, and LSU 
Their offense just continues to get it done. That's a two run double for Sunseri. Morgan Cummins, runner on second. Cummins singled in the first inning, and how about this LSU offense again? Averaging just under five runs per game on this season, but they scored ten runs in six innings yesterday and now have seven in an inning and two-thirds so far today. So again, the winner of this moves to the championship round tomorrow. Now looking way ahead, if, if, if LSU were to win this regional, they would host the Supers. It's the winner of the Tallahassee Regional. Cummins sends one left. Tally hangs on to this one, and the inning comes to an end. But LSU, the offense keeps going. They tack on two more thanks to Sunseri. And it's a 7-2 Tigers lead in Baton Rouge. Welcome back to the NCAA Softball Championship presented by Capital One. Don't miss a minute of the action from around the country as the regionals take place. We'll take you to the best live action on the seven innings live show on the ESPN app. You can see every game, every big moment on the road to the Women's College World Series only on the ESPN networks. Plenty of action taking place here in Baton Rouge. Nine runs and 13 hits combined so far, LSU with a majority of them as they take their 7-2 lead into the third inning. Caitlin Aldrich swinging away and immediately retired for the first out. Well, Louisiana hitting the ball hard. They do have a home run, three hits, and a walk. But, Megan, you mentioned it a while ago, Sierra Bryan being called out of the box to end the second after they had already scored a run and had a runner on was big. Yeah, I mean, this is a time, it's early in the game still, right? You just wanna make sure that you're as clean on offense and as defense as you can right now, cause you're playing from behind. And for this squad, just, I think, just a, a big blow for them. Jade Gortares over to third. Just like that, two retired. When LSU's been at the plate, their two innings, their two bottom half of the innings combined for 35 minutes long. But Shelby Sanceri flying through the third here with two away. Here's the cleanup hitter, Justice Mills. Swinging at the first pitch foul. So again, you're watching and as long as their strike's not a problem, right? But this squad, very aggressive at the plate, wanting to swing early, but they also know for Sinceri, more than likely, that's gonna be your best pitch too, Alex, right? She likes to get ahead in that first one, if not the second. So I don't blame them for swinging as long as they're swinging at the good pitches. Mills singled in the first inning. And one of three Louisiana hits so far today off Sunseri. Well, they call her Juice, Juice Mills. She has come up big in a number of clutch situations this year. And they will need that again in today's game if they want to rally. Swing and a miss, however. Inning ending strikeout for Shelby Sanceri. Her first K of the day, a 1 2 3 inning. On to the bottom of the third, we go. The party that every player wants to be at. It's going to be passionate softball for sure. Back to crown a national champion for the first time since 2019. They get to chase history here. 
Women's College World Series is back. It has been 718 days since we last had a champion crown, but who's counting? Finally here. I know I am. We have been waiting I quite am. some time for this, Megan. I know you're with me. Somebody is 336 days between the last game of 2020 and the first one of 2021, and that first game featured this LSU team taking on McNeese in the official first game of this season. And here we are all these games and days later at LSU. Dominating so far in the postseason. Run ruled McNeese 10-2 yesterday, up 7-2 today against Louisiana. And the 9-1 and 2 hitters leading things off for the Tigers here in the bottom of the third. This LSU squad, their offense really showing out this weekend. I think yesterday, they just, the, the way that they were able to hit one through nine, you had three home runs. I think late in the game, the adjustments on the third pitcher, so good as well. And today, today's the same. Ali Newland retired, his foreman back out there. Again, in case you missed it, Summer Ellison, the two-time Sunbelt Pitcher of the Year, started the game but didn't make it out of the first inning. Only lasted 37 pitches and was replaced by the sophomore Foreman. And that, I think, again, goes back to the way both of these teams know each other so well. Remember, Ellison's six-year senior on this squad, so you know LSU has a lot of video and a lot of scouting on them, and that's something they take so much pride in. Coach Tarina, Howard Dobson, Lindsey Leftwich, just so good at scouting opponents and you could just tell I mean every pitch Ellison threw to this lineup they were all over the drop ball once Gutierrez got the rise ball she hits it out and then at the, the last straw was the change up for me when they were able to sit change up and we didn't see her throw that many you just knew they were all over Ellison and you know what some days it's just not your day and unfortunately that was today for Summer Ellison. Now for her, I think you've got to forget that as quick as possible, Alex, because there's still a lot of tournament left. And this team is a team that can fight back easily. They've got the offense to do it. It's just gonna see if they've got the grit to do it now too. Absolutely, a talented Ragin Cajuns team came into this one 45 and 10 on the year. Now keep in mind all 10 losses have come when they have been held to fewer than five runs in a game. What a stat. <laughs> Usually it's, you know, held to no runs or one run, but they have to be held to just four or five. You know, LSU probably sick and tired of hearing all about the Louisiana offense because they put up 17 runs in just over eight innings so far this weekend. Leah Andrews two for two today and on the season batting nearly 800 in three games against Louisiana. Chopped over to first, but she won't reach there. The pitching starting to settle down for both teams. Here comes Sierra Briggs, member of the all SEC newcomer team. Sitting 329 on the season, heading into this regional. And for her career, batting nearly 350. You know, for me, this is going to be second time through the lineup now against Foreman, right? Brick, she came in against Briggs. What is LSU going to do? How are their batters going to make adjustments? That's what I was so impressed with yesterday with their ABs, the way they were able to consistently make the adjustments, to see the ball deeper. I mean, they were constantly trying to hit the ball opposite field in all three home runs that we saw, opposite field. So when they have a plan, at least yesterday and today, they have been able to execute and buy in. And so now, second time through, excited to see how they're gonna make that adjustment against Foreman. Briggs singled off of Ellison in the first inning. And flew out with the bases loaded against Foreman. That was the first batter to face Foreman out of the pen. Yeah. 
Well, the good news is no rain in the forecast here in Baton Rouge. The bad news is you can see these pitchers just ripping with sweat, both of them, Foreman and Sinceri, a hot, humid day in Baton Rouge. And the inning stays alive. Briggs with her second single of the game. And for Briggs, this is exactly what I was talking about. Her second time seeing her first time up, she was out front. It was a lazy fly ball to third base. This time, keeps her weight back, waits on the pitch, and able to drive it to the right side. 11th hit of the game already for LSU. Here is Taylor Pleasance, who was hit by a pitch in the first inning and grounded out in the second and hit by a pitch again. You know, Taylor Pleasance does stand on the plate. She is taking away that inside part of the plate out Louisiana, trying to still go in. Unfortunately, twice now, they've hit her. She was hit once this year in 52 games. Meanwhile, in three innings today, she's been hit twice. It means you and I are going to have to watch where she stands in the box against other teams. <laughs> this might be a Louisiana thing. Talented hitter. Here's Amanda Doyle in the cleanup spot. She has been absolutely on fire, sends one down the line, and foul. She's two for two today, a two-run double and a single. And, of course, two home runs yesterday, tied for... The fifth most career home runs in LSU history with 32. Has come up clutch in the postseason. 2019 regional here in Baton Rouge. Hit a home run year before. Drove in a game-winning run, and those postseason heroics holding true again this year for Doyle. Briggs on second, Pleasance on it first. Foreman has allowed two hits, excuse me, two runs both earned, four hits, no walks, no strikeouts in two innings of relief. Doyle sends this one to right field, and Rawls is there. The inning comes to an end. LSU with two runners, that is all. We'll talk to Louisiana head coach Jerry Glasgow coming up next in Baton Rouge. We go the six, seven, and eight hitters due up for Louisiana, down by five to the rival Tigers. Here on day two of the Baton Rouge Regional, the winner of this one advances straight to the regional final tomorrow. The loser moves on to an elimination game. So Kendall Talley, Carla Heath, and Julie Rawls do up. But first, we're joined by Jerry Glasgow, the head coach of the Raging Cajuns. And coach, I know it was a short outing for Summer Ellison. What did you see out of her today? Not enough. <laughs> nah, just some days it happens. Maybe brought her back too quick. You know, I don't know. They were all over. Give LSU credit. I mean, they responded. We put a run up. And you know, I was frustrated we didn't go for the, you know, like we poked a bear. You want to... Anyway, we should have did a little bit more, a bit more aggressive, and then give them credit. I mean, they come out hacking, and that's what they should have done, and they were ready and well prepared. Coach, you know, just a quick text earlier before this game, we were talking about yesterday and how your bats were silenced a little bit going 11 innings before your first run. What was that conversation after the game, and how are you still looking to get a response from your offense today? Yeah, you know, I, I'm tackled. I, I'm, I'm happy with the way they're swinging right now. I think now the key is just get in there and hack and whatever happens here, the rest of this game happens, but you definitely want to get the tone set for the rest of this two-day two, two day event. And hopefully we can extend it now. I mean, we got to either come back here or you got to play three more games. So I think we're, we're doing all right now. Yesterday we just we just thought too much. We got thinking about the windup and, you know, you hit the ball when it's moving, not while it's in her hand in her arm circle. And I thought we let that get in our head too much. And that's, that's just a sign of not being mentally as strong as you need to be. Coach, we appreciate you. We wish you the best of luck. Thank you, guys. 
Thanks, Coach. Jerry Glasgow, the Sun Belt Conference Coach of the Year. Megan, you heard him say we, we kind of poked the bear, kind of got to Sun Siri a little bit, but certainly not enough in a game like this. <laughs> He's always a treat to talk to, that one. And I love how honest he is, right? That's where him and I really bond, if you will. I know you guys got to hear some good stories as I got to play for Coach Glasgow in the MPF, but he's right. You know, he wants, he's just so passionate about this game and his players and his team that that's exactly what he wants. He wants them to keep putting that pressure on there. And how about that? Alyssa, Alyssa Dalton starting up with the single. And I think, again, we're still just in the fourth inning. And as we've watched softball grow, People can put up six spots easily in one inning. So all it takes is just one at a time and nice at bats and swinging at good pitches. And Dalton poking the bear again as they have a runner on. Before that, Sunseri had retired five in a row and had delivered a seven pitch third inning. But here in the fourth, the leadoff hitter aboard. And here is Tally who singled in the second. A Louisiana team that finished the season on fire heading into this regional. They had won 29 of their last 33 games heading into Baton Rouge. Coming off their first extra innings affair in the NCAA postseason last night. Since 2018, that one bounces in for ball one. Sunseri, meanwhile, has allowed to earn four hits, a walk, and a strikeout so far. The seventh highest scoring team in the nation. Tally over to short. They go to second for one, on to first. Not in time. Like the way Sinceri comes back here after giving up that single, still hammering that drop ball outside part of the plate, and that's where you want to throw it, right? You're trying to induce the ground ball to the left side so your defense can try for that double play. It was Carly Heath thought about it, laid off. Strike one, again, delivered that dramatic walk-off pinch hit last night. Transferred over from South Carolina. During 2019 with the Gamecocks, hit 315 as a freshman while going 8-0 in the circle. And how about you get your your start after earning that start, and now your second A-B, you're going to get back-to-back change-ups. That's dirty. First time we've seen that from Sinceri today. Ready with the 0-2. Got her. <laughs> Three change-ups in a row, Alex. That is just not fair. I think you think about it in your head as a batter and surely no way she's going to throw me three and there she does. This time she's able to get it a little bit lower and unfortunately for Heath just not able to pick up on it and that's how she got her first change up against her strikeout against Justice Mills was a change up. So now you're kind of seeing how uh, Sanceri and LSU are changing up their pitching game plan and going a little bit more off speed this inning. Yeah that was a nasty at bat by Sunseri against Heath, now facing Julie Rawls, who walked in the second inning. The only walk issued today by Sunseri. Sunseri picked up win number 10 on this season last night. 10 and 6 on the year. Two zero is absolutely crushed, but foul past a sliding Newland. Great effort by the freshman. You know, don't sleep at Tally over there at first. She's got 14 stolen bases on the season. This team as a whole, just incredible, 162 with the lefty up. Love the effort. Tremendous. But that's something I'd like to see out of Louisiana, get some base runners moving, try to make something happen. Two and two to Rawls.
Had base runners on in three of the four innings so far. Somehow, somewhere, that one missed. <laughs> they wanted it. I wanted it. That looked like a nice pitch. That drop ball outside corner. Ferran Cummins trying to pull that one in. I like it. The fans <laughs> going crazy in the background. Nice crowd on hand here at Tiger Park. We'll do it again. The full count offering. That one a bit further it looked like, but delayed called strike three. Sensari says, yeah, that's right. Two in a row, two strikeouts to end the inning. We move on to the bottom of the fourth. We'll talk to Beth Tarina coming up next. LSU coming up to bat in the bottom of the fourth inning. Up by five, seven to two. We're now joined by their head coach, Beth Tarina. And speaking of your offense, Coach, what has gotten into them? 17 runs in nine innings so far in this regional. What are they doing right at the plate? I think they're great hitters. I mean, they're so talented. They're really a special group. I think they've been up against some buzz saws all year long, and now they're battle-tested and ready, and I think they were prepared for this weekend. And, you know, they're swinging more confident, and I think as it keeps going, they just keep feeding off of each other. You decided to go with Sunseri game two. Uh, I know you and I chatted a little bit. What what was it that made you decide to go with her again today? I just thought it was a good matchup. I just feel like she's so fearless for us. You know, I just thought um, also after what they had seen yesterday and the 11 innings with George Washington, I just thought it was a good matchup today. Um, you know, and honestly, I was still trying to decide walking down the stairs. I thought we had a few good <laughs> options uh, to go on the mound today. I'm confident in our whole staff, but she's doing a great job for us. I think you made the right decision. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Beth Coach. Carina's squad, 33-19 and 19 on the season. Sunseri has held Louisiana to two runs, and right now, at least, that's been more than enough because her offense has put up seven runs and 11 hits as we begin the fourth. They came into the postseason averaging 4.8 runs per game, <laughs> but those numbers are escalating quickly. Again, 17 runs through their first game and a half, really, of the regional. Georgia Clark leading things off in the bottom of the fourth here for the Tigers. You know, I'm going back and looking. She she mentioned how she thought maybe, I feel like Sinceri, or she thought would have been the closest one to a Sierra Lang for George Washington yesterday. And other than the changing of the motions and the deceptiveness, I do think... She has a great point, whether that is the fact that Sinceri, as we saw last inning, can pull out a changeup and just throw that at any count, right, and just hammer that drop ball. And, and she throws all the pitches like Sierra Lang did too, so probably saw something for sure uh, out of Sierra Lang, what she was able to do and silence that offense yesterday. And if there's anyone that knows her pitching staff the best, it's Coach Trina. Dalton deep in the hole, but makes the play from short. How about Alyssa Dalton? Like that's the second time we've seen her go deep in the hole in this tournament. I like her range, and then again, just showing off the arm strength. That is a long throw, Alex. She makes it look so easy. And her back foot's touching the outfield and gets her by at least a step, step and a half. And, you know, Foreman in the circle has done a solid job, has now faced 12 batters. This is the 13th, and Raylene Gutierrez has only given up two singles and a double, and that is it. And considering LSU's offense put up five runs in the first inning, Foreman has done a nice job of at least slowing them down a bit. Yeah, absolutely, and that has everything to do with the way that she spins it. She keeps the ball down, as you see right there, but... She just has three different speeds, if not, you know, maybe even four. She mixes in a couple different off speeds. That curveball not only breaks away, but it also, because she's a lefty, will kind of dip down. She's only topping out around, you know, we can't see it here, but 57 miles per hour. And when she throws her straight change, that's coming in when it's good. Coach says he likes it at around 48 miles an hour. Gutierrez sends one bouncing back off the wall. Rawls having trouble with it in right field. And Gutierrez ends up on second. That's her third hit of the day. Now a single, a double, and a home run for Raylene Gutierrez. Have a day right now. If she gets one more AB, she's going to look to get that triple to complete the cycle. 
She is all over that plate, lefty on lefty, anticipating probably the curve away, but she reacts to the backdoor curve and does a great job keeping her hands inside to keep that one fair. Well, Gutierrez and Sanseri in the six and seven spots in the lineup combined so far. Five for five with five RBIs. Here is Sanseri. Two for two, a double and a single. They have done the damage. Again, the six and seven spots in the lineup. Sanseri gives one a ride to right field and just in front of the track is Rawls. Runner advances. Well, again, this is the first game of three today in the Baton Rouge Regional. The winner of this advances to the regional final. Coming up next, an elimination game on Elimination Saturday. McNeese against George Washington. GW still looking for their first NCAA postseason win in school history. That is coming up next in one more elimination game. We'll follow suit tonight in Baton Rouge. There is Morgan Cummins with a runner over at third and Gutierrez. Cummins one for two with a single back in that five run first inning. Eleven batters came to the plate back in the first. Bringing home five runs. It'll be interesting to to also to see how long they stick with Foreman considering she only threw 14 innings this year. You can see how hot it is out on the field. This is already working just over her third inning of work in relief of Ellison and now the count goes 3 and 0 to Cummins. Well, you know Alex, I think at this point you you try to ride her out as long as you can. But at certain point if for whatever reason they get a couple more runs right now, I wouldn't be surprised if you see Lamb try to keep him in this game cuz a couple more runs then they're in run roll territory, right? And you want those extra two innings. Again, this is a hot offense. This Louisiana offense has the capability to put up two, three runs an inning to get themselves back in it. So again, I think they're going to hold on and keep her there. But let's say that LSU tacks on at least two more runs, and I think Lamb comes in. They're going to tack on at least one more. Morgan Cummins in the eighth spot. Now two for three. It's an 8-2 lead. And how about this, Megan? These six, seven, and eight hitters have now combined for seven hits. I'm doing the math here. Six RBIs, seven hits, two doubles, a homer, and four singles. Just phenomenal performance for LSU in the bottom half of the order. We love to see that, absolutely. And that was a great swing, that ball tailing down, tailing away. And i just so impressed. I, I keep talking about it. It's just the way that they have made the quick adjustments. And here you're going to see that change made. We said they're going to tack on one. It didn't take two. It's just one. But we're not going to see Kendra Lamb. New pitcher coming up again for the Raging Cajuns. We'll be back. the game taken over for Louisiana and how about this it's Carly Heath who is a batter delivered the pinch hit walk off double last night in the 11th inning but now she's in the circle yeah for Heath again you're gonna switch it up now you're back to a righty so they started with the righty they go lefty with foreman righty with Heath and I wish I had something brilliant to say here on how to keep these batters <laughs> off balance but honestly these LSU hitters they are making adjustments. They're hitting drop balls. They're hitting balls that are 68 miles per hour. They're hitting the 58 mile an hour curve. They're sitting change. So these batters, one through nine, are just incredibly locked in right now. Allie Newland, the freshman. 0 for 2 so far. Carly Heath in the circle, undefeated in her career at 14 and 0. 
but this year has only thrown 16 and two-thirds as the runner advances there into scoring position. Cummins moves on to second. Well, and if you're Heath, I mean, you're trying to keep your team from getting run ruled right now, as hard as that is to believe. You're 45 and 10 team on the year. Louisiana hasn't been run ruled at all this year. But trailing 8-2 with a runner on second. Again, the run rule goes into effect in the fifth. Well, and that's why we heard from Coach Glasgow the last half inning is just hats off to LSU and their batters, the way they came out against Summer Allison. I mean, I don't think many people would have predicted that unless you're on the LSU staff. I mean, the fact that they were able to come out and get things going, Aaliyah Andrews, Sierra Briggs with the slap, they're just driving that ball into the ground, pleasant hit by pitch, and then Doyle with that big two up to RBI double, that set the tone. Then all of a sudden, the drop ball goes away. Now Guti uh, Ellison trying to go up in the zone, which I thought was the right call, too. I think you needed to change the eyes. Gutierrez goes yard on a rise ball. This is what I'm talking about. This team was ready for every single pitch that Ellison had. 13 hits tonight, and, and Beth Torina echoed those sentiments earlier. She said, we were ready. We were prepared for this. You could tell. They had scouted Ellison well, and they had faced her already twice this season, back in February. Yeah, and that was something Coach Trina also mentioned. Again, everyone's so big into scouting. Uh, they need to be. That's the way our game's going, and I love it. But they've been holding on to games and video since early in the season. She mentioned it. She's like, we just keep them in our back pocket because usually we know we're going to probably face them in the postseason. Good idea by Torina as Cummins will head back to second on the foul ball. The motto for LSU this year is, I love their motto, make it count, but not too much. They want to make the moment <laughs> big, but Beth Torina told us, you don't want to make the moment too big where you're overanalyzing things and thinking too much. So far, that motto has paid off in this regional. Yeah, and go figure. I believe it was Taylor Pleasance. Correct me if I'm wrong, but she was the one that really needed to make sure to not make it too big. And, and what she meant by that is you just start overanalyzing everything too much and you start overthinking. And when you get to that point as an athlete, then you're in a lot of trouble because you're not just see ball, hit ball. You're not keeping it simple at that point. Newland holds off. And she did go around. So Allie Newland with an inning ending strikeout at the hands of Carly Heath, who comes out of the pen. LSU extends their lead to 8 2 as we move on to the fifth. Welcome back to the NCAA Softball Championship presented by Capital One. Our next SEC storied film is titled Hold the Rope, and it premieres Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. It's the story of legendary LSU baseball head coach Skip Bertman and his quest to turn the Tigers into a perennial power. Hold the Rope was a consistent team motto that encapsulated the trust and unity that Bertman instilled in all the teams he coached beginning in 1984. Again, that premieres on Monday night. Here we go, fifth inning getting underway, top of the fifth, 9-1 and two hitters due up. And immediately, you know, as the first batter is retired, Megan, we saw this a lot, Alex Loeb and Megan Willis with you here covering this Baton Rouge Regional. We saw this a lot, especially late in the game against George Washington last night. Louisiana swinging at a lot of first pitches from the opposing pitcher. Yep, and, it, and again, it's all about fine if they're strikes. Right? It's, it's about making sure that if you're going to be aggressive, you're aggressive at balls that you can handle. And that last night is what we really saw them just swinging themselves out of at bats. There's another first pitch swing from Sierra Bryan. And you know, when Jerry Glasgow told us they were kind of poking the bear, he, I think he specifically was referencing that second inning when they had already put a run. Mm -hmm. Crossing the plate, they had a runner on second. Brian looked to be safe at first, but then she was called out for stepping out of the box. 
who knows what could have happened later on in that inning, but instead the inning came to an end on that call. Yeah, absolutely, and, and that is a time where early in the game it's 5-1, to one, or not at that point 5-2. to two. You've got to keep pushing the gas pedal. You've got to keep putting the pressure on. And I like the bunt. It's not that it was a bad idea. She would have been safe. Just unfortunately, in the way the game's changed, you, your foot comes out of the box, you're out. And that's no surprise. That was added about three uh, years ago. And umpires are all over that as our catchers. But that, that was an easy full foot out of the box, nearly stepping in front of the plate. Again, in that inning, two of the first three batters had reached. One had scored. There was one on second, but Brian called out to end the second. One, two, chop past Sunseri and making its way to center. Second hit of the day for Brian. Also led off the game with a home run. So the speedy senior aboard at first. Entered the postseason with 35 stolen bases, tied for the fourth most in program history in a single season. So watch her over at first with one away and Caitlin Aldrink at the plate. And that one bounces off of Cummins. However, Ryan stays at first. Aldrink hitless today. Had reached in 24 of her last 25 heading into the regional. And again, had been the team's best hitter batting average wise since April 1st. Louisiana's had their opportunities. The leadoff hitter has reached in now four of five innings, but they're 0 for 7 with runners on. Well, that slump is over as there's a base knock by Aldrink. And I think LSU gets away with it, knowing the speed of Sierra Bryan probably just had to hold up a little bit to make sure this ball dropped, but a little surprised just knowing where this ball landed. As you saw, she had to avoid the ball, that's why. And great job to Tidwell getting to that ball and not letting it go the outfield. So again, that's more about defense and just the lucky situation for LSU that it kept Bryan at second. Big spot for the Raging Cajuns if they want to get back in this ball game. Jade Gortar has moved up from the bottom half of the lineup after getting two hits last night, but she is 0 for 2 in the three spot so far today. Ryan at second, Aldrink at first. Gortares began her career with the Texas Longhorns in 2017. A year later, transferred to Arizona State, where she was a two-time All-Pac-12 selection. And then opted to move on once again, joining the Raging Cajuns. Hitting 285 this year for Louisiana. Sends one to right center. Andrews is there for the second out. Two away runners on the corners for the cleanup hitter, Justice Mills, singled in the first inning and struck out in the third. Another player who was bumped up in the lineup is Jerry Glasgow looking to get something going offensively. Raging Cajuns hitless with runners in scoring position so far today. Mills strokes one to right field, reaching up. That is past the outstretched glove of Taryn Antoine, who came on to replace Newland as a defender in right, and that will drive in a run. An RBI double for Justice Mills. That's huge right there, Alex. And right now, this is about playing to make sure you get a full seven-inning game in right here. You get the runners on, and this is what Coach Glasgow is talking about. you got to keep poking at that bear here. You get a ball you can handle, and you drive it. I mean, she gets all of that one. She's able to barrel it up. And a nice piece of hitting by the vet. Here's Alyssa Dalton. Singled in the fourth inning. Flew out to end the first. Dalton, who returned from injury just in time for the postseason. She missed 16 games earlier this year after injuring her hand. 
but she jumped back into the lineup for the final series of the regular season and then caught fire in the Sun Belt Conference Tournament, batting 636 before heading into this regional. Two thousand nineteen Sun Belt Conference Player of the Year. The season before was the Sun Belt Newcomer of the Year. Talented, talented player. The senior from Cypress, Texas. Over to second. Tidwell routine play and the inning comes to an end. So Louisiana leaves two, but at least they get one on the board. Back to a five-run game in Baton Rouge. The NCAA Softball Regionals is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Taking a look at the Baton Rouge Regional, the winner of this game between LSU and Louisiana advances to the regional final tomorrow. Coming up next here in Baton Rouge, McNeese and GW in an elimination game. Whoever survives that will take on the loser of this game in the nightcap tonight at roughly 8 p.m. Eastern. Again, here at Tiger Park on Elimination Saturday. So two elimination games coming up. This one right now, not the elimination game. As we enter the bottom of the fifth inning, LSU's offense has been the story so far this weekend. Ten runs yesterday in six innings, seven runs are making eight runs so far today. Can't keep track. They're scored just about every inning as now we begin the fifth at the top of the order. Andrews, Briggs, and Pleasance do up. Yeah, this offense just so strong and can't say it enough how many times they've just made adjustments no matter who's in the pitcher circle. Now having to go up against Carly Heath. Heath's only thrown to one batter so far. Allie Newland, she got the strikeout. I'll tell you what though, Alex, I think it's just, we use the word mayhem so much around here because anything can happen, right? Depends what pitcher comes out, watching what happened to Summer Ellison today and how LSU was prepared. We've already talked about some of the upsets around the country yesterday, Oregon losing to Texas State to start uh, the Austin Regional, Megan King, the pitcher there, so good. But a few of the other upsets that we've seen, I, I, is JMU. JMU we know is good. We know about Odyssey, their pitcher, but she upset Tennessee. So Tennessee's the host nine seed, but JMU's in that championship game. I think the other big one we talked about, Georgia upsetting Duke. They're going to be in that championship game. And then one big one, Notre Dame comes up big with a 12-3 win against Kentucky, putting them in that championship game against Kentucky, the 14 seed. And little note here, Notre Dame never has made it to Super Regionals, and Notre Dame has had some really talented squads over the years, so lots of mayhem, lots of parody, and that's what we love to see, right? That's how we know our game's growing so much is, yeah, okay, we can set these seeds, but really these two, three, even four seeds, they're tough teams out there, Alex. Well, we witnessed it here last night, George Washington who had never been to the NCAA postseason before until this year, took Louisiana, who had the third most wins in the nation, to 11 innings before finally winning one nothing. You just don't know. And there is GW and their head coach, Shane Winkler, waiting in the wings. They will take on McNeese in that elimination game. Coming up after this close play at first, but Briggs is retired. That was an awesome play right there by Dalton. The fact that she was able to get rid of that ball so quick. And nice job by Mills holding on to it. She almost got herself in trouble stretching early before getting that ball, but able to recover nicely. So two away for Taylor Pleasance, who after getting hit once all year has been hit twice. That one bounces past the pitcher. Torres unable to make the play. And Pleasance reaches for the third time today. A smile on her face as she comes up with her first hit, hustling over to first. This one had a lot of English on it, Alex. Watch right off the end of the bat. I mean, there's, <laughs> Ooh, 
You thought it was bouncing to the right. It hits the ground, goes the opposite direction. I just really don't think. And then after going off the hill of the glove of Heath, no one was getting that one. Hot potato. Nobody could hang on, so the <laughs> inning continues. Here's the cleanup hitter, Amanda Doyle, two for three. Double and a single, make it three for four. Well, you'd have to say right now, certainly early, but the most outstanding player, at least most outstanding hitter of this regional, Amanda Doyle, three hits today, two homers yesterday. Yeah, I mean, seeing beach balls pretty much. I mean, she's just anything close, she's there. And even that one, she was out front, Alex, but still able to barrel it up. So strong, just drive it right past third base. Here is Georgia Clark. Now 14 hits on the day for LSU. Clark, one of the few batters yet to reach. Clark and Newland, the only LSU starters yet to reach base. She did homer earlier this season against the Ragin' Cajuns. Now also keep this in mind, with two runners on, Three runs ends the ball game here in Baton Rouge. So LSU looking to advance to the final tomorrow. Louisiana has not been run ruled this year. Only 10 losses, in fact. Their worst loss came by seven runs. Clark smashes one, but that's foul towards the pen. Well, we thought it would be a fascinating tight ball game considering last night, Louisiana's pitching was nearly unhittable. They allowed two hits in 11 innings. Lamb took a perfect game into the seventh. Ellison started today, was one of the best pitchers in the nation, but didn't make it out of the first inning. Through two-thirds of that inning, throwing 37 pitches and allowed five LSU runs. And Louisiana has gone through three different pitchers today in the circle. Heath in there now. And the bases will be loaded for LSU. It's a great at bat by Georgia Clark. Even after that long foul ball, kind of saw her talk back whether to umpire catcher say, "Was that? Would have that been a ball?" And she's kind of smiling there. And then after getting all that, still staying patient enough and understanding, you don't need to hit yourself out right now. This is all about getting the pitches you can handle and taking that walk. Well, look who's up with the game on the line potentially. The hottest hitter today, Raylene Gutierrez, a triple shy of the cycle. Hit a three-run homer in the first, singled in the second, doubled in the fourth. Tried to hold off. This is back in that five-run first inning. That rise ball again, and it get Gutierrez all over it, off the foul ball. Again, three more runs, ends the ball game. Gutierrez to left field, tally is there. And the inning comes to an end. A big out for the Ragin' Cajuns as they keep this one going. We move on to the sixth inning here in Baton Rouge. Alex Loeb and Megan Willis with you here for the Baton Rouge Regional. So far, the story of the weekend has been LSU's offense. They have scored a total of 18 runs in 10 innings between yesterday's game. Their run rule win over McNeese and today's combined. Gutierrez hot at the plate, a triple shy of the cycle. Doyle three for four, and Louisiana pitching, which had been so brilliant yesterday and throughout the season. Struggling here, allowing eight runs off of 14 hits. As we begin the sixth inning. Louisiana trying to get something going at the plate. They had three on in the last inning. They only able to score one run. They've had their moments, had their opportunities, but just one for six with runners in scoring position today and two for 11 with runners on. 
tally over to short. Pleasance is there. Yeah, you know, Alex, we talked about it in the open last night. I mean, the big question was more so how Louisiana was going to bounce back and be able to get their bats going. Sierra Bryan set the tone with that home run. It's like, oh, okay, here we go. We're, we're ready to go. And then a completely different story with Summer Ellison coming out there. And LSU just all over her scoring the five runs in the first. So, again, going to go back probably to the drawing board. Louisiana is and figure out, okay, now how do we get both of these things working together at the same time, pitching and offense. This is very unlike Louisiana allowing eight runs today. Only once this year have they allowed more runs in a ball game. They have run into a buzzsaw in LSU's offense. The winner moves on to the regional final, the loser today will play in the third game tonight. The nightcap here from Tiger Park against the winner of McNeese and George Washington, which is coming up next. Harley Heath. Sinceri waits for it, waited too long. I think maybe she thought it was going to turn foul by the time she realized, started hustling. Regardless, Heath is aboard. Yeah, at that point, I think you just kind of let it play out, Alex, right? You know you're not going to get her. You kind of see it tailing that way. And that's all about the conversation, your first baseman maybe. I mean, she was nowhere to be found either, but someone's got to be talking to her. Louisiana has now had at least one runner on in all six innings. Here's Julie Rawls, 0 for 1 with the walk. Can they take advantage with runners on? That's been the difference. Well, I, I definitely don't think that Louisiana should have come out here and scored four, you know, five, seven runs against Sinceri. I still think they're doing a good job. They've got the three runs. They're getting the hits. You're right. I think you still go back to that second inning. With Brian being out of the box with a runner on second, that is the biggest thing that I noticed, that that's when they really needed to get at least one more run across. but so far much better than what we saw yesterday. One, two to Rawls pitch number 91 on the day. And another strikeout of Rawls for Sinceri. That's her fourth overall second getting Rawls. Sinceri does a great job tucking this in. Tight and inside, you see that nice late break, especially with where Rawls is standing. I mean, she just made that pitch basically break around her knees. That was dirty. Louisiana now two for 12 with runners on. A 167 average. Here is Sophie Piscos, the freshman catcher. Scored the game-winning run last night in the 11th inning. I love how Sanceri is just hammering the inside corner right now. Again, right inside. Not afraid to go in and not afraid to, to still make it dance back there. And right on cue. <laughs> I was going to say, and so go. precise. She hits her. First batter she has hit today. His coast in the nine spot. Still trying to go inside, this time up in the zone, and unfortunately that ball just kept tailing. So Louisiana in business again with multiple runners on in an inning. First and second, back up to the top of the order we go with two away. I'll keep going back to what Jerry Glasgow told us in the fourth inning. We're not quite poking the bear enough. We're, we're threatening a bit, but not enough. Let's see if they can break through here against Sanceri. Sierra Bryan singled in the fifth inning. Let off the game with a home run. Let's see what's going on here. Looks like 
Piscos is going over, getting her arm wrapped, probably her elbow where she got hit, put a little compression on it at first because Coach Tarina came out, I think, to argue if she attempted to swing at that. And then all of a sudden, I was like, wait a second. Why she ran into the dugout? So she's all wrapped all up at first. Heath is at second. And here is Sierra Bryant, led off the game with a home run, giving Louisiana that temporary lead. Ryan played four years at Georgia, delivering the second most triples in program history. After 2020, wanted to play elsewhere. She knew Jerry Glasgow. In fact, he was the very first coach to recruit her. Back when she was in high school and he was an assistant with Georgia. And all these years later, he said, hey, let's do it one more time. Let's reunite the band. So she said, you know what? I'll join you with the Raging Cajuns trying to come through here in the postseason. That one snared over at first, however, and Gutierrez getting it done. A big, big defensive play by the Tigers. And Louisiana strands runners yet again. Gutierrez, three hits at the plate and flashing the leather in the field. We were playing softball in February here in Clearwater. The amount of great matchups that we have, great teams here, unparalleled. We have some of the best talent in the country. The best ticket, the hardest ticket to get in town. If you are a softball fan, this is a place that you want to be. We will be back at the beach and better than ever for the St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational. Log on to our website for more info. We hope to see you February of 2022. The St. Pete Clearwater Elite Invitational taking place from the 17th through the 20th. So many things coming back to normal, especially in the softball world. It's great to see Alex Loeb and Megan Willis here with you as I this one go. moves on. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. Beach, Take a Beach road in trip. February. Let's do it, Alex. <laughs> well, the question here is, I tell you what, beautiful weather. I know there's rain around the country delaying some games. Beautiful weather. The question is, can Louisiana keep this game going? Because right now in the bottom of the sixth inning, LSU with three more runs will vault themselves into the regional final tomorrow. The Tigers run ruled McNeese yesterday, 10 to two. Here's Shelby Sunseri, the pitcher, fouling one off. She's had a nice day at the plate and the majority of the damage by the Tigers offense has been done by the six, seven, and eight hitters. Gutierrez with three hits and three RBIs in the sixth spot. Sunseri here batting seventh. Two hits, two RBIs, and a double. I just think it's so great for LSU, the fact that, again, like you keep mentioning, all the hits at the bottom half of the lineup, but the same thing yesterday, right? Sanceri helps her cause out big time. Helping her cause out here. That's career home run number 33 for Shelby Sanceri. I love how it works out on cue like that, Alex. That ball up in the zone. She's in the circle for the second time in a row. Yesterday she had the home run. Today she has a home run. This ball all over the heart of the plate and she makes Keith pay. What a performance by Sunseri. Three for four, a single, a double, and a home run. Here comes Morgan Cummins who has two hits in the eighth spot and has driven in a run. Sinceri getting congratulated. A strong performance by the junior in the circle and obviously as well at the plate. The dugout has come alive for LSU. Nine runs now off 15 hits. Again, two more runs by LSU. We'll put this one in the books. 
if the score holds true. LSU is done playing today. They'll wait for the regional final tomorrow. And Louisiana would go on to play in the nightcap tonight against the winner of George Washington and McNeese. So two elimination games coming up in Baton Rouge after this on Elimination Saturday. Cowgirls of McNeese. Looking on, getting ready to take on GW 35 minutes after this one wraps up. You know, they're excited about the sunny <laughs> weather, blue skies. Rain everywhere. So There's much. been rain in Louisiana since Monday. Rain and flooding across the state. And again, no rain in the forecast today or tomorrow. Knock on wood. Yeah, Tigers bats, thankful for that. Unless you making it rain offensively. 19 <laughs> runs now in the regional. I'm just so good to see that last shot there, the fans in the stands. Again, it's postseason. Sure, you're going to get yourself up and that adrenaline's already there because you're playing for something bigger. You want to get to the World Series, but then you add the extra component of the fans and it just feels so much better. You get your season taken away last year, and yeah, it's great to get that season back, but it is completely different, Alex, to play out there in an empty crowd, and sure, you can add a little bit of, of music from the press box and whatnot to try to hide it, but this, there's nothing like playing in front of your fans, and they're getting into it. I mean, you go back to that first inning, they were on their feet, both of them. Uh, both sides, the Sierra Bryan home run. You just knew it was going to be a tight ball game at that point. Obviously, LSU explodes and, and the whole stadium erupts, and that's what it's all about. Sports, college sports specifically, I just, there's something just extra. And then you add in the rivalry between these two schools, you love to see it. Nice grab over there by Aldrink at third. Yeah, fans from all these schools in attendance. Obviously, the two other Louisiana schools. The Raging Cajuns at McNeese have plenty of fans here as we get another look at the Aldrink grab. And even GW has a nice fan base here that made the trek from the nation's capital their longest road trip of the year. So one away here in the bottom of the sixth inning. And here is Taryn Antoine at the plate. Newlin started in that nine spot, but went hitless. Antoine, the junior from Alexandria. A nice freshman campaign in 2018. Infield taking care of business for Louisiana. Well, the big inning was the fifth. Five runs in the bottom of the first inning for LSU. Home run, three-run home run by Raylene Gutierrez. Two-run double by Amanda Doyle. And four more singles. That set the tone for this contest. Leah Andrews went two for two in the first inning alone as the Tigers hit around. Marina mentioned to us that she's had one Andrews or another play for her in nine of her ten years. A good portion of that, Aaliyah, and before that, her older sister, A.J. Andrews, the All-American center fielder. I mean, what those two athletes have brought to this program is just incredible. Not only just their athleticism, but, I mean, they are highlight reel after highlight reel. The amount of top ten plays that we've seen in Sports Center between the two of them just so insane. I mean, there's nothing they can't catch <laughs> between the two of them. Andrews getting drafted to Athletes Unlimited. It would be nice to see her and her sister play together. 
made so many fantastic grabs. I mean, you get worried when she doesn't make a crazy <laughs> diving grab in the outfield. It has become beyond routine for Not Leah fair. Andrews. Not <laughs> fair for us slow people. 2-2 <laughs> two -two with two away. Another base hit for Andrews. That one is going to roll all the way back to the wall as they were playing in. She's flying around the bases and slides in with a two-out triple. You know, this was a key for LSU. They were able to get on the board 10 runs yesterday, really without a whole lot of Andrews making noise at the top of the lineup. This is her third hit of the game and just shows you as we're talking about her speed, just how fast she is that she's able to get into third easily, driving it to left center. And more importantly for the Tigers, the winning run is now at the plate. They are trying to run rule their way to the regional final. Here is Sierra Briggs. She has two hits on the day. Another nice grab. <laughs> Who These needs fans the are prepared today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully they have the sunscreen out too. <laughs> it looks brutal. Well, we saw I a number know. of these pictures earlier just covered in sweat in the circle. Again, in the mid 80s. You know it's human. Here's Baton Rouge. Yep. For LSU's offense, they have had at least two base runners on in every single inning today. Nine runs, 16 hits, and no errors in the field, by the way. Clean game by the Tigers. Briggs hitting 331. And nearly 360 with runners in scoring position. She has one here with Andrews at third. Sends one to left field into foul territory and Tally unable to end the inning. Love the effort by Tally out there and left just knowing how important getting that last out so they can't score any more runs. This one, almost right there, you know, I can't decide. Doesn't look like she held up by any means. She just, I think you're talking inches, maybe even centimeters, tips right off her glove. So Briggs gets another chance with two outs here in the bottom half of the inning. You wonder if Sun, maybe just the shadows, you know it's behind the stadium, may have played a little part. I love the discussion that's going on here. She <laughs> made the grab. No sharing going on. That's okay. You earned it. Yeah, if you're going to catch it, I'm not giving it away. Especially without a glove on. One, two. This one is mashed to right field into foul territory. Oh, in the bullpen. Is that Ellison back there? <laughs> Got her back to the plate. Briggs is dropping bombs, but in foul territory. Yeah, doing a nice job covering both sides of the plate right now. Curly Heath running out of ideas at this point. Maybe go with that change up, get something well out of the zone. You're way ahead. Like that. 2-2. Two -two. Well, Heath, the third pitcher of the game for Louisiana, had only thrown 16 and two-thirds innings on the entire season. So far today, two innings on in relief. That one over a leaping Dalton. Andrews is going to come home, and LSU is now one run away from run ruling Louisiana and heading to the regional final. That was a really, really good at bat from Sierra Briggs there, Alex. We are talking about just how she was covering the plate. She was going deep into the count. Foul ball's left side, foul ball's right side. This time, this pitch, she's able to 
to stay on just a little bit more. She didn't get underneath it. She was able to stay on plane and drive it. <laughs> nice little dance. Here too. we go. Yeah, Taylor Pleasance with a chance to seal it. The SEC Newcomer of the Year has been hit by a pitch twice and also singled in the fifth inning. Winning run on it first in Briggs. And as we were talking about, she's been hit twice. Look where she stands here, Alex. She is towed up on that line. And the fact that, I mean, it's hard for any pitcher to try to squeeze something in there. You can, oh, there you go again. Wow. Trying to go with the changeup, and unfortunately, I mean, no one's trying to hit anyone with the changeup. If you're going to try to hit someone, you're, you're not throwing a changeup. So I know the fans think that may be on purpose. It's the third time. She kind of throws that elbow out there, too. Well, again, she was hit once all year in 52 games. She's been hit three times today. And by all three pitchers, by the way. So that moves over the winning run to second, and here is Amanda Doyle on fire at the plate. Three for four today with a two-run double. Two home runs yesterday. <laughs> and she takes a good one. That's her bread and butter, too. We saw her go yard yesterday twice. Opposite field, one low, just like that pitch, one high on the outside corner. Yes, and she's just getting her timing. Pass the bat. Here we go. Tigers looking to end it. That one misses outside LSU. Five runs in the first, two in the second. One in the fourth, two more here in the sixth inning. You know, it was Louisiana who's known for their offense coming into this regional. Seventh highest scoring team in the nation, LSU, was averaging less than five runs per game, but they scored 10 yesterday in six innings. Ten more today. And Doyle with the inning ending strikeout. So we play on here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, down to their last three outs of the contest. Seventh inning on the way. Mary three outs away from sending her team to the regional final tomorrow. And speaking of that, it's now time for our Capital One player of the game. And it goes to Shelby Sanceri as limited the seventh highest scoring offense in the nation to three earned runs. And offensively, not bad either. Three for four at the plate with a home run. And a couple RBIs as well. And the fact that this is now her second start of the tournament full complete games two home runs in the tournament as well i'd have to say shelby sanceri definitely come to play this weekend three outs away from her ninth complete game of the season facing the two three and four hitters here in the sixth inning sanceri picking up win number 10 yesterday against mcneese Closing in on 11 here today. So if the score stands, LSU advances to the regional final. Louisiana will play the winner of GW. And McNeese, which is coming up next, 35 minutes after the end of this one here in Baton Rouge. Caitlin Alderink right to the glove of Pleasance. Raging Cajuns down to their last two outs of the contest. Jade Gortarez coming up 0 for 3 against Sunseri. Swing and wait the first pitch. Tidwell is there and the scoop by Gutierrez. Two outs here in the seventh. Jerry Glasgow, that three hole has kind of been cursed right now for him. Ortares gets moved up because she gets the two uh, hits yesterday. Hitless today, so again, wouldn't be surprised later this evening you see this lineup kind of get changed around again. Louisiana down to their last out. Sunseri, 71 of her pitches, 71% of her pitches today have been strikes. She has been strong in the circle. Just one walk compared to four strikeouts. Justice Mills trying to keep this game going. She's two for three with a double and drove in a run in the fifth inning.
LSU entered this regional as the number seven seed in the nation, their second highest regional seeding in program history. And off over at third, Doyle on to first, and the ball game is over. LSU headed to the regional final with a 10-3 win. For Megan Willis, I'm Alex Loeb. Thanks for watching. Now we send it over to Ole Miss and Arizona. We'll see you next time.